May grace be yours and mercy and peace from God our Father and from Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. The Lord, the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen, Jesus is risen, we are in the, se the season of Easter when we celebrate Christ crucified and risen, and the Holy Spirit keeps showing up. What's up with that? I mean, there's the cross with the lilies that we decorated on Easter Sunday morning, and we're not past the season of Easter yet. In a couple of weeks there will be geraniums, but they're not here yet. It is not the season of Pentecost yet. And the Holy Spirit keeps showing up. Last week, in the first reading, Peter had been called on the carpet in Jerusalem because he had been doing what good Jews are not supposed to do then. He had been visiting and even eating with Gentiles. So he shows up before church council and they say, what were you doing? And he said, the Holy Spirit told me to go. And they accepted that. A couple of weeks before that, we read of how Jesus interrupted Saul's trip to Damascus and the interruption left Saul with a, a sore butt and eyes that did not see and Jesus said keep going into Damascus and wait. Saul continued into Damascus and waited until a man named Ananias came and laid hands on him and said brother Saul Jesus, who met you on your way here, has sent me to you so that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, those events both came after Pentecost, so maybe it was okay, it was timely. But on Easter Sunday morning, we read from the Gospel of John, sorry, second Sunday of Easter, we read from the Gospel of John about Easter Day when Jesus met the disciples and breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Wasn't he supposed to wait till Pentecost? Maybe not. When we affirm our faith together, we affirm that we believe in one God who is three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the Father we're pretty comfortable with because we know what the Father is up to. The Father is keeping the universe going keeping it from winking out of existence, keeping the stars and the planets in their courses, making things work the way they are supposed to work. We remember how he said to Noah after the flood, from now on, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will not cease. It's going to be orderly, it is going to be predictable. You can count on things working the way they are supposed to work. And we can and we do because God is reliable and God is absolutely faithful to God's promises. And then there's God the Son. And we're pretty sure we know what the Son is up to. In the Creed, we will affirm that on the third day he was raised, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will return to judge the living and the dead, but for now he is seated at the right hand of the Father and is not very surprising. 
any surprises that we experience about Jesus tend to be changes not in what he's doing, but changes in our understanding. I mentioned a colleague of mine pointing out that when Jesus said to Simon three times, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He set it up so that they were standing by a charcoal fire. And I had never noticed that before, but when Peter had denied three times that he knew who Jesus even was, he had been standing by a charcoal fire. Jesus had set this up sort of to, to remind Peter and give him another chance. And that didn't surprise me because Jesus had done anything different. It surprised me because I saw something that I hadn't seen before. And then there is the Holy Spirit. Absolutely unpredictable. Constantly surprising the church. Jesus said to Nicodemus, the Spirit moves where it's going to move. And you hear it, but you have no idea where it's come from or where it's going. And that's the way it is with those who are born of the Spirit also. They take on, we take on that characteristic. Jesus says in today's Gospel, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. So as unpredictable as the Spirit is, as much as the Spirit goes where the Spirit is going to go and the Spirit goes when the Spirit is going to move, Jesus says the Spirit will do these two things for us. The Spirit will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. The Holy Spirit teaches us. In chapter 16, Jesus says, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. And it's interesting to speculate what some of those things were that Jesus had for the disciples, but he couldn't tell them because it would have blown their minds. They wouldn't have been able to stand to hear those things. Some we can kind of figure out by where the Holy Spirit has been leading us. Very early on, the Holy Spirit said to the church, you can now stand to know that it's possible for somebody who is not of the nation of Israel and who is not a convert to Judaism to belong to God through Jesus Christ. Apparently, Jesus couldn't say that to them during his lifetime. It would have been too shocking for them. And when the Spirit did begin to, to say that to the church, it took a while for the church to accept it, and it was not a smooth road. In the reading last week, Peter reports to the church at Jerusalem, the Spirit sent me to this Gentile's household, so I went. And they received the Holy Spirit just as we did when they heard the word of God in Christ and so the whole church then, according to Acts, rejoiced and said, okay, so God has given to Gentiles repentance that leads to life. As it turns out, it wasn't that quick or easy. Even Peter was not so sure that he believed it. We know from Paul about a potluck at the church at Antioch. Peter had been it was in a church basement. Peter had been sitting at a table with some Gentiles. 
and finished his plate and stood up and went back to get second helpings and maybe some things that he hadn't gotten the first time. And he could see out the window, not all the way in the basement, there were basement windows, and you could see into the parking lot. Peter could see that James, the disciple, the apostle, one not too sure about Gentiles, he could see that James was pulling into the parking lot. And so when he went back to sit down to keep eating, he went to a different table where there were no Gentiles. And Paul noticed. And Paul said, hey, Peter, what are you doing? And he called him out. It's in the letter to the Galatians. I am not making this up. The Holy Spirit guided the church into a truth that the church was not eager to accept. And it took a while. The Holy Spirit guided the church into another truth about 1,500 years later. 30 years before the town of Lucky was founded, not that long ago, there were still Christians who believed that it was perfectly okay with God for them to own other human beings. It was not a problem for the churches, for their churches. And the Holy Spirit began to move more powerfully in the church and outside the church to teach us that for one human being to claim ownership of another human being is utterly repugnant to God. Could Jesus have said that to the disciples? Maybe, maybe not. I think it may be one of those things he was thinking of when he said, I have a whole lot more to tell you, but you couldn't bear it now. The Spirit will guide you. Before the new teaching about slavery, sometime in the 14th, 15th, 16th century, the Spirit began to teach the church about marriage, that a marriage should have two partners, no more. Could Jesus have taught that to the apostles? I think they probably would have said, but wait a minute, what about the patriarchs, Abraham and Jacob? They had more than one wife. Was that not all right with God? What about King David? What about King Solomon? They had more than one wife, and they're attested in Scripture as people who God was pleased to call his own, faithful to God. And there are some in the church, not everybody in the church, but some are persuaded that the Spirit has guided us into another tweaking of our understanding of marriage that of the two people it's not necessary that one be a man and the other be a woman. Sometimes when the Spirit guides us into new truth, it doesn't look true to everybody right away and it takes a while and it's difficult. He will guide you into all the truth, said Jesus. And, he said, the Spirit will remind you of all the things that I have said to you. <sighs> things that we needed to hear and need to hear again and again and again. For instance, when we are tempted to think, we are, when we are tempted to live as if we are God's chosen people and people in other congregations are less so, or we Lutherans have the truth, 
and the Presbyterians and the Catholics and the Methodists do not, or at least not as much of it. We need to be reminded that Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. Sometimes we need to be reminded again that Jesus said that. And thanks be to God, the Holy Spirit reminds us. Again, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me, I will never drive away. Anyone who comes to me, I will never drive away. From time to time, I go far enough down a wrong turn that I begin to wonder whether I have gotten myself in so deep, whether I am so far off the path that God is tired of me and wants nothing more to do with me. And I need to be reminded that Jesus said, anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. And the Holy Spirit reminds me often through a brother or sister that Jesus said, anyone who comes to me, I will never drive away. And just in case somebody here needs to hear it again, let me say it again. Jesus said, Anyone who comes to me, I will never drive away. Sometimes we need to be reminded of what Jesus said. Thanks be to God, the Holy Spirit reminds us. Again. Living in the culture we live in, it's very difficult not to take on the values of the culture. Every so often we hear about whether our standard of living has gone up or down. And it can be measured precisely to fractions of a percent. The average American standard of living went up 1.2 percent over the last measurement of time. How do they do that? How do they measure standard of living so exactly? It's by saying our standard of living is a matter of how much we consume and how much we can consume if we want to. And when we are in danger of sliding into that kind of thinking, believing that the world is right about that, we need to be reminded that Jesus said, Take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Sometimes we need to be reminded. Thanks be to God, the Holy Spirit reminds us. And it is easy to get discouraged about the church, about our role in the church, about whether our congregation measures up, whether we are the kind of people that God wants us to be, whether we are living together as God wants us to live together. Is there really a point to this? Or are we just pretending and getting it wrong and not doing any good? When we slide into thinking like that, 
we need to be reminded that Jesus said, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And thanks be to God, the Holy Spirit is among us to remind us of what Jesus said. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So the Holy Spirit goes where the Holy Spirit is going to go. And the Holy Spirit moves when the Holy Spirit is going to move. And the Holy Spirit cares for the church and cares for God's people by leading us to where we need to go next and by reminding us of what Jesus has said to us. The Holy Spirit helps us to stand firm and the Holy Spirit helps us to soar. The Holy Spirit reminds us of what God the Son has said to us in the past and the Holy Spirit introduces to us what God has to say to us in the present for the future. The Holy Spirit keeps us rooted and the Holy Spirit helps us to move. And we don't even have to wait till Pentecost. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Amen.